And so tonight we look toward thy temple and we look to thy glory. That it might please you to show yourself, to come out from your hiding place and grant unto your people answers. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated in the house of God. You may be seated in the house of God. So it is critical for a priest to understand how the supervising spirit of his altar is going to respond to his petition and to his sacrifices. If you are deficient in the feedback protocol system, you are not likely to maximize your priesthood. And so we need to entrench this understanding. It's very basic. What I want to do today is very basic. But I don't want to assume that you know it. That uh, the spirit of a teacher compels me not to assume that you are acquainted with these matters because your dexterity on these issues is what suggest that you can profit from the protocols of your priesthood. Uh, you know, yesterday we saw a couple of ways that a spirit can respond to a petition. And as I was driving today, the Lord began to whisper to me that you have to add that these answers can be physical and they can be spiritual. God can manifest as an answer. His spirit can manifest as an answer in the spirit realm as wind. It can also manifest as an answer in the natural realm as wind. All right? Are you there? He can manifest in the spirit realm as fire, and he can also manifest in the natural realm as fire. I'm talking about fire coming down from heaven that your physical eyes can see. That's the kind of thing that was associated with the ministry of Elijah. The Spirit of God can manifest as an earthquake that is in confined, cons, confined to the spirit realm. It can also manifest as a physical earthquake. And we have a few evidences of physical earthquakes that have taken place on the account of petitions that were raised and God decided to answer by a physical earthquake. Are you there? Uh, so intercessors are lot. I read the books of quite a lot of intercessors. And you find that these praying people saw that the darkness in their city was in a certain high-rise building. And they went there and they laid hands on the building and began to make supplication. A few weeks later, there was an earthquake. The earthquake did not affect any other infrastructure in the city. It just affected that building, brought it down, and life continued. So it can be a physical earthquake. It can be a spiritual earthquake. It can be a physical fire. It can be a spiritual fire. Some brethren came to my house and said they want to go to their village and do some spiritual sanitation. And I blessed them. I blessed them, and they went to the village. And when they began to pray, it was a physical fire that came from heaven, physical fire, that came from heaven and consumed the shrine, physical fire that came from heaven. And you know what? The fire descended from heaven when it was raining. So the fire overpowered the rain, and it burnt off the shrine, physical fire. So we have a few records in our own practice of ministry where these things that we're talking about manifested in physical ways. So I forgot to add yesterday that the manifestation can be physical and it also can be spiritual. Now, I refuse to speak about the voice yesterday because he can also respond in a simple, in a, in a quiet, simple, small voice in the privacy of your heart. But if we speak about the voice, then I will need to open up the pavilion and show you diverse ways that God can communicate to the spirit of his people. 
you must understand that um, the effect of what we are doing is going to be captured in the manifestation of the, our supervising spirit. Now, Jesus made statements like this. He says the hour has come and now is where the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And in attempting to explain this statement, he went further to define a terminology. He said, God is spirit. The reason why worship will be in spirit is because God is spirit. And spirit can only, only, big only, contact spirit. Because God is spirit, he can only contact your spirit. The effect of his contacting your spirit, you can feel it in your soul, but it's not contacting your soul. The effect of his contacting your spirit, you can feel it on your body, but it's actually not contacting your body. He is contacting your spirit because he is spirit, and if he begins his activity, it is your spirit component that his activity is directed at. In the feedback protocol, each and every one of us must be equipped to understand how to interpret the encounters of God in the uh, privacy of our spirit being, because that becomes the locus of God's operation. Are you still with me? All right, so I thought it wise that instead of me just to talk about the voice alone, I should talk about all the possible channels through which God can communicate with the human spirit. Because when you begin priesthood and you begin to sacrifice, get ready. Get ready for a feedback. And your ability to interpret this feedback accurately will determine how much profit you can draw from the process of priesthood. If you are still with me, say, Amen. <laughs> now, you see, most of you here don't practice what we say, what we teach, but people online do. And they've been sending testimonies, like somebody heard that God can respond by fire, and he went and released the fire, and some miracles took place yesterday, and they sent us um, messages, feedback of testimonies drawn from just practicing with simple faith, just simple faith. And God responded powerfully. So I challenge you to practice the things we teach before you sleep every night because there's so much um, that we have to cover during the course. Of, I, I don't even know if you still have capacity to receive more. Am I just pouring the thing? Pouring the thing? Pouring the thing? Oh my God. Why the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus? It is my duty to pour it. Especially that I know that uh, we also have a congregation that is online, which is my better congregation, actually. Because you, you just do like this sometimes. <laughs> I appreciate you. God bless you, Jesus' mighty name. Okay, let's go on. First John. Chapter 2, verse 20. You know, once in a while, I know you are fasting, and sometimes you are even angry. So I have to bring a comic to lighten your spirit so that you can receive the word of God. <laughs> God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. First John chapter 2, verse number 20. First John chapter 2, verse number. It's a scripture that I've come to love because no other scripture in the Bible most plainly sets forth the issue of the unction as plainly as it is represented in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. The Bible says, but we have an unction. All right, can you? Underline unction, because we are going to do some work on that word unction. We have an unction from the Holy One. This unction that I speak about is not from the devil, it's not from Satan, it's not from demons. We have an unction from the Holy One. And what does the unction empower us to do? The unction gives us the capacity 
to know all things. So this unction is a knowledge faculty. Now, stay with me, stay with me. The knowledge faculty. The knowledge faculty. Now, that's what your five physical senses does to your body. Your physical senses, what they do is that they are knowledge faculties and they are teachers of your body. You see, I don't know if you've ever met a blind man before, but uh, if you have, you will discover that uh, he is lacking in the sense that can pick sight. So all knowledge that can be drawn from sight, he is not capable of. So he builds his sensitivity around the senses that are functional. For some, it is the sense of touch that helps them to get by in the absence of their sight. But imagine what happens to someone when all his five physical senses are dysfunctional. He's like in a prison, and the prison house is his physical body. You see, so the same way that our physical senses provide education, provide knowledge of the physical environment that we interact with, this unction that we have received from the Holy One is the instrument of spiritual knowledge. Are you still there? So every form of spiritual knowledge comes through this unction. Comes through this unction. So Apostle John is trying to enlighten the body of Christ, trying to enlighten the church that there is something you received from the Holy Spirit. It is called the unction. It's a knowledge faculty. It's the place from whence God mobilizes spiritual knowledge. And when we talk about spiritual knowledge, we're talking about things that you never learned and things that you were not taught. All right? And the reason why I opened this scripture is because the first form of communication you can get from the Holy Ghost is within the category, are you there? Ah, it took me long to know this one. So I, I, I really need to be sure that you are in this auditorium before we discuss these matters. These are the things people um, organize seminars around and collect money. <laughs> but the Lord said, freely have you received, so freely we give. Hallelujah. But I tell you the truth, it took time to be able to fully articulate these matters. Now, I want to support my use of this scripture by drawing your attention to the book of Second uh, Corinthians chapter 4. Is there anyone here in Second Corinthians chapter 4? All right, let's pick it up from verse 6. Let's pick it up from verse 6. It says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Man, you have to be calm. Let's look at this scripture critically. Uh, do you still remember the book of Genesis? The book of Genesis, when God showed up on the scene in the midst of pitch darkness, and he said, let there be light. And instantly, there was light. And for people with the scientific brains here, you might ask where the light came from. I think that's a legitimate question. Okay. Is it that God, being light, was the one through whom ah, there were many? I've seen all kinds of interpretations of that scripture. But the Bible says, are you there? Yes. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. The light came forth. It was from inside of the darkness itself that the light came forth. That's how you got saved. The moment you confess Jesus in that darkness of your heart, inside of it, That's why we call salvation a miracle. You can't talk. 
uh, in the natural, you expect that light should come from a light source. Huh. The Bible says he commanded it to, to shine out of darkness. That's how you got saved. He said, this light, are you there? This light shined on our hearts. And it will interest you to know that the light we are talking about is the light of the glory of God. So when you gave your life to Christ, what happened to you? The reason, the, you know, I don't know whether you experienced that joy inside of you. There's no human word to put that joy to. But what really happened to you is the light of the glory of God that began to shine from your inner man. That's a miracle of regeneration that took place there. And the moment the light of the glory of God began to shine upon your heart, what it began to transmit is it started transmitting the knowledge of the glory of God. Oh, you are not there. Now, when God shines on you, when your supervising spirit comes to bring the feedback to your priesthood efforts, it shines on your heart like a brilliant light in the spirit. When your spirit man receives this light, it is this light that activates that unction that you have received from the Holy One. And the byproduct of this reaction is spiritual knowledge. For it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. He has shined in our hearts. To do what? To give the knowledge. So this is the scripture that reveals the engineering behind spiritual knowledge. Are you there? And you see, the thing about knowledge, because many of us are educated people, professors, PhD holders, master's degree holders, so many intellectuals in our midst. And that's the reason why I don't emphasize in intellectualism. Because I, I, I can't match a lot of you here. We have all kinds of. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what? When I said hallelujah, you did not really respond. <laughs> I, have to, I have to protest about that. <laughs> now, you know what? All the knowledge that you have, the knowledge that you got from your education, from school, from the classes, from the library, you got knowledge and I don't despise the knowledge. It's because of that knowledge that you are a doctor today. And since we don't know how the systems of our body works, when we have a breakdown in one of the systems, we come to someone that has knowledge in the workings of those systems so that he can uh, bring those systems up and running again. It's, we don't despise the knowledge that you have gotten from school, but all of that knowledge was sown on the soil of the soul. The difference between this kind of knowledge that we speak here is a knowledge that is sown, that is transmitted from your spirit. Hmm? This knowledge that is transmitted from your spirit, sometimes this knowledge arises without even influencing your soul at all. So the Holy Spirit is capable of giving us Non-cognitive communication. That's the kind of communication that we say that Jesus spoke about in the book of John chapter 6 verse 63 when he says that it is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Words that are spirit. It falls in the category of communication that is called non-cognitive communication. The first in the category of non-cognitive communication is what we call the knowing of revelation. The knowing of revelation is purely spiritual. It doesn't influence your soul. It's a knowing that is born in the privacy of your heart. Have you ever this is a prayer, a praying fellowship, so I can afflict you with some knowledge. How many of you have had this experience before in the place of prayer? 
you came to the knowledge of the fact that the prayers you were offering were answered. There is no laboratory that you can go and verify what you know in your spirit, but you know that you know it. You don't know how you know it, but yet you know it. Now, that kind of knowing is what we call non-cognitive communication. That communication did not pass through the processing house of your soul. It came directly from your spirit man. So you don't know why you know. You don't know how you know, but yet you know. And it will interest you to know that 70% of God's communication is in this form. If you have not mastered the knowing of revelation, you cannot master other forms of spirit communication. Are you there? Come with me to the book of John. John chapter 13. Verse number one. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew, can you do justice to this? Anytime we stumble on knew, no, underline it. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew, underline, that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, and the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And Jesus, what? Knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God, that means Jesus also knowing that he was come from God, and Jesus also knowing that he went to God. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. Jesus knowing that he was come from God. Jesus knowing that he was going back to God. The knowing of revelation. Do you realize that if you put a man on, you want to persecute a man. Maybe you want to get him to deny the fact that he's a follower of Jesus Christ. You got the wrong man if the guy has a knowing. Because you cannot beat away the knowing. You cannot scot your way the knowing. So there's something that Satan can never take away. Just like they took away from, from Joseph the coat of many colors, but there was something his brothers <laughs> could never take away. That which came by spiritual knowledge, that which came by spiritual processes, Every other thing can be stolen, but nobody can take that from you. You cannot beat that out of a man. Jesus knew that the hour had come that he should depart out of this world. Jesus knew that he was come from God. Jesus knew that he was going back to God. This kind of knowledge comes through the valve of the unction that we have received from the Holy One. What, what differentiates the, the boys from men is knowing. Knowing. So when you begin to do some priesthood activities, you need to be able to detect the feedback protocol. You must be vast in that corner. If not, you will waste your time oppressing. The form in which the feedback comes is, is such that you can even despise it. But a small sign in the realm of the spirit is a witness of a mighty thing that is to come. When Elijah sent his servant to go check the sky to see what his prayer was producing on the canvas of the sky, the servant came back and said he saw not in the first time, saw not in the second time, saw not in the third time, saw not in the fourth time, he saw not in the fifth time, he saw not in the sixth time, and when he went and checked the seventh time, he saw a cloud, little cloud, an insignificant cloud, that was in the likeness of a man's hand. That was the only physical manifestation, the only sign that pointed to what was about to happen. But in the spirit, the prophet said, he hears the sound of an abundance of rain. The abundance of rain that manifested only witnessed its manifestation by a little sign. 
So when you receive a little sign in the spirit, for people that are experienced, they know that abundance and abundance is about to show forth. That little sign in the spirit can be the reason between life and death. I remember when I went to Benway Links. It, it's, it's been so many years now. Been like um, 12 years or thereabout. I went to Benway Links and I paid for a seat. Where was I going? Going to Abuja. Paid for a seat. And when I paid for the seat, I lost my peace. I went back and said, I'm no longer interested in traveling. Can you give me my money? The guy shouted, insulted my father, insulted my mother, insulted my village, and then he gave me my money, reduced 100 naira for tax, for tax purposes. So, all right, no, no problem. Glory to God. Then after 30 minutes, when the, that boss left, I came back to the counter. I said, I, now I changed my mind. I want to travel. So he confirmed that I was mad. So this time, he didn't say anything. The confirmation of my madness. You know, hallelujah. He had confirmed that the man is, is mad. There was no business, no point laboring over a madman. So he quietly gave me a ticket. I paid for it. And I sat in the bus. And just before Akwanga, the guys that were in that bus, they were all out of the bus because they had an accident. And all the bread, the only, the only thing left in the bus was the bread that they bought. They forgot they left the bread because most of them were moved to the hospitals from the accident scene in an emergency. Hallelujah. Now, the difference between life and death many times might just be a little sign. And if you are not skillful in interpreting the fact that a little sign is a proof of a mighty thing that is to come, you will run into the den of lions. You will lay down and make cobra, cobra, your pillow. Jesus knew that the hour had come that he would depart out of this world. Having loved his own will in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended. Satan had put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And Jesus knew that he was come from God. Jesus knew that he was, what? That the Father has given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God, and that he went back to God. So the question today is, what do you know? That's the knowing of Revelation. It's in that context that 70% of what God is telling you is hidden in. And as a priest, you must be very competent in the feedback systems of the supervising spirit of your own. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Oh, my. So let me give you what I have on my notes. I was compelled to make notes on this matter. If there is anything you will forget, it's not these matters. Because these feedback systems, this is the way you profit from the Holy Ghost. You have seen me. You have seen me. How that someone, someone that is close to becoming a, a manager, we say, okay, it's time to resign. If I'm not sure of what I'm hearing, you are, I know you know that it is, you are strategic when you can hear God. So a knowing is an inner ability to discern a knowing is an inner ability to discern what a thing really is. This knowledge goes beyond the surface or the superficial outlook of things to reveal their very nature. Through this knowledge, we can access God's inner testimony about things. Through this knowledge, we can access God's inner testimony about things, about people, etc. 
Hallelujah. So it is possible through this knowledge to access God's inner testimony about a thing. So with scripture to support this is in the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. Luke chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes watched him, whether he will heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. Verse 8. But he knew their thoughts. On the line, knew. That's the knowing of revelation. That's the knowing of revelation. He knew their thoughts. Many times when Jesus sits back, and he wants to dispense his teaching ministry. Most of the time, he uses the instrument of the knowing of revelation to know the right words to use because he picks them from the hearts of men. Jesus was such a prophetic teacher that when he unveils the scripture, even when you read his parables and read, oh my God, read it today, you will see how relevant his deliveries were to the average Jewish person the average normal person in society. It was because of the prophetic enablement that accompanied his deliveries. The Bible says he knew their thoughts. You will now see Jesus now responding based on that knowing of revelation. Not responding based on in seven notes, but responding based on the knowing of revelation. Making his deliveries very, very Prophetic. You know, I need to keep asking us questions here. What do you know? What do you know that you don't know from the university? You know from God. You know from God. Especially when you begin to experience something that looks like an elevation. Then so many people will want to identify with you. If you lack this ability in those days, you will dine with devils. He knew their thoughts. Oh my God, I like Jesus. And said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up! Stand forth in the midst. And he arose and he stood forth. The reason why he's asking the guy to stand forth is because he wants to say something. He wants to respond to their thoughts. Now, can you see this prophetic teacher? He's not responding to questions. He's responding to the thoughts of the people in the congregation that he is addressing. How powerful will preaching of the gospel be if the minister can access the thoughts of the people that he is speaking to? He knew their thoughts. 70% of the efforts of the Holy Ghost will be to equip us with this dimension of knowledge. Oh, it goes beyond face value. It goes beyond the surface area. It reaches into the heart. It can, it can drop into the secret parts. It can bring things that are hidden to light. He knew their thoughts. Please help me ask your neighbor quickly, what, what do you know? He knew their thoughts. Mark chapter 8, beginning from verse 14 to verse number 17. He knew their thoughts. For it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. He has shined in our hearts to give us the knowledge of the glory of God that was upon the face of Jesus Christ. When he shines upon your heart, what he produces is that he gives you knowledge. When you begin to get spiritual knowledge, just know that you are fellowshipping with the Lord as light. Kabo Samaya. Have you ever been in that state? You know, I don't know. Okay, you, are, you don't do what I do. I don't know how many days I've been preaching. Many of you think I have the messages drawn out. So I'm, I'll just go back and pick and just speak in tongues and say, Baraka, Baraka, Baraka. You, you don't understand. When I finish one lecture, as I'm driving home, the Holy Ghost is giving me the knowing of what to say next. 
and that's how I, I can continue for one year on this platform on one subject and we will not say we will not repeat anything as long as the Holy Ghost is still alive I have something fresh to say to my world you know what I will not come out until I pray into that realm where I can access the knowing of revelation now this this lecture is supposed to have a practical session where, where we speak in tongues for a while and then we wait to hear when the knowing of revelation switches on this is the way people were discipled those days in the 80s everybody must be put in a situation where it develops individual capacity to be able to assess the knowing of revelation in your spirit today we tell people about breakthrough that you are close you are about to touch it you are about to assess it there's a button you need to press the, your key holder is too heavy hey! Hey! oh god have mercy or not <laughs> please help me preach help me preach help me preach help me preach what you are looking for will come out from your spirit what God will do is that he will shed light on your spirit man. And when he has done that, the unction will be mobilized. The inspiration that is needed to guide your path, the light needed to guide your path will derive from that form of intercourse. Hallelujah. In my opinion, we were distracted as the body of Christ on the continent of Africa for a long time, in my opinion. And I say that not boastfully. I say it as a researcher, as a scholar, as one that has labored in the world and doctrine for years. I have some authority to say the truth. I can be trusted on issues of truth. Are you there? Say no, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, the miracle is close. So everybody is looking for what is not lost. They say, now there's a key with which you need to access. What is lost is the key. People are beginning to look for key holders. Key holders. <laughs> Wake up from that slumber. Nothing happens until the supervising spirit of your altar gives you a feedback. Man is not that powerful. The knowing of revelation. Okay, I said open to the book of Mark chapter 8 verse 14. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the sheep with them more than one loaf. Next verse. And he charged them saying, take heed, beware of the living of the Pharisees and of the, and the living of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he didn't always know it. There was a point that the Holy Spirit came and the unction was switched on. The moment the unction was switched on, he knew it. And the moment he knew it, you will notice that his response to them was based on what they were thinking. These are the scriptures that I see that I take a fast and ask God, upgrade my teaching ministry. Let me be able to access the thoughts of men as I glide with truth so that my words will travel with the aid of, of spirit tight precision. Jesus responding to the others when he knew it. Oh my. You, you don't know anything. The, the money you save for two years, that place you are taking it to is, is the, the people are about to swindle you. But you, you, all the way from welfare quarters, you moved, you moved, you moved, you came to Urukum and there was no boss there. That was not a sign. You, you couldn't pick that. God was not. You, when you didn't see a boss, you took a bike. Ooh. The bike got to police headquarters and it grounded. Aye. 
There were signs. God was showing you signs. You know, you couldn't pick it. You move, you took another bike. The 200,000 that you have been saving, you have been saving and praying on it. Save, you pray. Save, you pray. Save, you pray. You took it. It was darkness. <laughs> you, were, you were walking in darkness. <laughs> and gave, gave the men at Data Market. And that was the end of the story. The phone number you have been communicating with in the night, you just tried it. Till today, it's been three years. That <laughs> Lord have mercy on us. When he knew it, he said unto them, why reason ye? Because ye have no bread. See, you, you don't know. Most of us cannot even be the direct disciples of Jesus. He will just wake up and as he's preaching, he'll just tell you what you are thinking. That's your strategy that you are doing. You are, oh, why reason ye this way? He knew their thoughts. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Ghost rises from within you, one of the things he does to you is that he imparts the knowing of revelation. If you forget everything, don't ever forget this. So when we pray, the reason why you are praying is because you are expecting that somewhere along the line, you will receive the knowing of revelation. Sometimes the answers to your prayer is evident for you to see. Sometimes you receive the answers to your prayer in the knowings of your heart. Are you there? And the moment God has shown you as much as a sign that he has responded to your petition, it means it is time for implementation. It's not time for more prayer. It's time for Im implementation. If you don't know how to coordinate with God, you will waste his resources of grace. And most times, the average believer doesn't know how to partner with God. God will not do what you should do, and you cannot do what God will do. It's a partnership. He comes to us and he says, I'm the vine. And he says, you are the branches. And you know that the responsibility of bearing fruit is the responsibility of the branches. He will not do what you are supposed to do. There is a time of implementation. And when the time of, the, the way you know the time of implementation is that the time of feedback is accomplished. He opens the door to the time of implementation. The time of implementation is when you take advantage of the resources that have been made available to implement that which is the will of God. In the partnership of God, your hearing is most critical. What differentiates one preacher from another preacher? Because all of us read the Bible, we know the Bible, we preach the Bible, and we are likely to be the same on issues of preaching and teaching. <laughs> what, what separates masters from learners is hearing. Is here. You must know when to stand. You must know when to sit. You must know when to walk away. You must know when to run. That's what it distinguishes the boys from the men. You're here. If you are wise, you invest anything possible to ensure that you secure an ear that can hear God. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. John chapter 2, verse 23 and 24, finally before we go to the next item on the agenda. John chapter 2, verse 23, and verse number 24. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. People were hailing him. People were basking in his glory. And the Bible says he did not commit himself. His strategy of not committing himself to them was born out of a knowing of revelation. Has it not surprised you? 
how that you have a gift, a gift of always aligning with strange people. There's an enablement that is on your life. This enablement always pairs you up with strange individuals that wreck destiny, that wreck Maria Regis. They always end up around you. Has it not bothered you that this gift that you have, this strange endowment, that brings you into compatibility with destructive persons. It's a sign that an altar, an ancient one, the one that they use fire in the night to kindle for years is on your case. Are you not aware of that? Because Jesus, there was a knowing in him that made him restrain himself. As a young minister of the gospel, and with the privilege of the grace of God, in this country and outside of this country, I've stood on some of the most prominent platforms. Platforms, I don't want to go into details about the platforms. I've stood on some platforms. And then when you finish doing the assignment, so many people want to connect. <laughs> and if you lack a knowing, the parable, that will lead to your downfall, will come out of some of those connections. People were basking in his glory. They were basking in his light. They were basking in the manifestation of God that was upon his life, but he refused to commit himself to them because he knew all men. He knew all men. So the question is, the people you call your friends, have you seen them in the realm of the spirit? Have you seen them with the, with the eye of the Holy Ghost? It is a risk for you to enter into that level of commitment if you have not received a knowing about it. When people see that you have a soft heart, people are wicked. Are you know, are you, are, do you know that? They will take advantage of the fact that you have a soft heart and put you in a spot where you are pitched against that your soft nature. Such that if you are not careful, you will become hardened because of people. When people say that you have a liberal heart, they want to take advantage of it. Not really that they have situations that are as grievous as people that should enjoy the mercies of your heart. But they know you have it, so we will camp there. If you don't have a way to know men, you will find yourself in the rain. And then you have one of those stories that is like, that they tell children in the night. <laughs> you got those types that they used to admonish children. One of them will result from your life. He knew. He knew all men. I was doing three days dry fasting and my mother was, he came to visit us because of my wife that delivered. I came out of the room, I saw her taking a call. I allowed her to finish. I said, the person that spoke to you on that call was lying to you. She didn't believe me. You know, it's, it's very difficult for you to believe that your son is a, is a prophet. The one you carried like this. He's now a prophet. He can hear God. It's the, for, I don't know. There's that yoke. It's on mother. So. That yoke. It's a big yoke on mother. It's a yoke that I have no intention to break. I, I, I have, I'm, I'm done with that yoke. <laughs> I'm done with it. I came out from the room because it was on my knees. The Lord told me, somebody is lying to your mom. So I left the prayer room, came out and said, I waited for her to take the call. And then uh, she finished. I said, the man speaking to you was lying. She said, what, what am I talking about? Okay, let me tell you what the man was telling her. You know, my, my elder sister is a Canadian citizen. All right, so 
This guy, this 419 guy, was calling my mom to say that they had a problem. She was apprehended somewhere, and they need to make some money available. I said, well, it's good to look for money, but none of mine is available anyway, because I know you are being duped. And you know what mothers can do? They can raid banks. They can invade just to bring salvation to their own. And I, my mother labored like that, labored. It was in the evening that my elder sister called him, called her. Not because she knew what was going on. She just called ran, randomly. And when my mother found out that what I told her was true, she didn't tell me. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with trying to break that yoke. I'm done with it. I don't know what yoke is on mothers. I don't know. They can't believe that prophets are in their midst. When the Lord told me, he told me, he said, resign this job now. So I just, out of court, I said, mom, you know what? The Lord visited me in the spirit and he said I should resign. He said, why not wait? I said, the Lord didn't say wait. He said, resign. He said, does the Lord speak like that? <laughs> I'm done. I'm not. <laughs> does he speak? Does he, does he insist like this? I said, he does, and he, he, he has. And I felt, I now knew it, it was, I would have told her that I've resigned, not that I'm trying to. The next time she heard was that I've, I'm gone, I'm on the field. And we didn't see for a long time. The time we now saw was when we were dedicating this, this place. She moved here. She moved like this. She moved at the back. Why, why will you believe because you have seen? Your God is the owner of the future. And he wants to give you signs about things that are yet to come. So that you can be strategic. You'll not be moving around like everybody in the place. You can come out of poverty if you can hear the voice of God. Oh, my friends told me. They say, you are gifted, but you are in a village. Nobody will hear your voice. Forget about the wisdom of men. What, what, the people in Lagos, who, who, do you know? How many people in Lagos do you know? <laughs> Stay where God has asked you to stay. We don't move because the other city seems to have more prospects. We stay where God has assigned us. Yes. And if by any means we are, we are, poverty catches up with us where he assigned us, it means the poverty is part of the burden we have to bear to serve his way. The economic Environment is, doesn't suggest in the slightest whether or not God is in a place. Where are you sent? He refused to commit himself to the guys that were hailing him because beyond the hailing, he could see beyond the hailing. He could understand beyond the claps that this man cannot be trusted. Hallelujah. So that's the knowing of revelation. The next channel through which God speaks, and I want to spend some time on this matter. Next, number two, visions. When a spirit begins to visit you, it opens your spiritual eyes. A vision is the ability to see through the eyes and the lenses of the Holy Spirit. In visions, we see through the spectacles of the Holy Ghost, the telescope of the Holy Ghost. Seeing through the telescope of the Holy Ghost gives us a perspective that we can never sustain outside of Holy Spirit aid. You might be looking at a scripture and that scripture carries all the components, making for your deliverance and your salvation. And you never look at it enough to stumble upon 
the articles of redemption that are fastened into it, except you see through the lens of the Holy Ghost. So in visions, God helps us see through his lens. And there are three kinds of visions. Recognized by the Bible. The first kind of vision is what we call the night vision or the dream. The second kind of vision is what we call the trance. And the third kind of vision is what we call the open vision. If you acquaint yourself with prayers, you acquaint yourself with fasting, and you begin to pray regularly, you begin to fast regularly, whether or not you are a prophet or not, the vision channel will open to you. The vision channel will open to you. And I want to describe this channel so much because if you can be very strong. If you can be very strong on these channels, you will be 10 years ahead of your generation. Yes. 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 10 years ahead. 10 years I have done business in the spirit beyond where you see manifestations in the natural. I've done business in the spirit beyond here. 10 years ahead, I, I've done business. You can actually, if you have big visions, you can begin to do business with the invisible realm, with the invisible calendar, with the invisible time frame. And you would have built into the spirit over and above your present time. Yes. Visions. Okay, come with me to the book of Job chapter 20 verse 4 to 8. As we talk about the night vision. The night vision. Job 24. Knowest thou not this of old since man was placed upon the earth that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite is bought for a moment. Though his excellency mount, mount up to the heavens and his head reach to unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? Verse 8, he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. It is only those that lack eyes that celebrate people that are amassed riches through corruption. It means you have not gone into the sanctuary of the law. That's why you, you sing the praises of men that did not win by righteousness. And our generation is drunken with that wine. And we sing at the gates of corruption. We rejoice at perverseness. That's a proof that we lack the visions of God. The prophets of the Bible they were brought into captivity, spiritual captivity by the things that they saw. They were made captive of those things. There was a fear that was upon Noah when he was asked to build the ark. I don't know what he saw, but the evidence of the, of the faith of Noah was revealed in the fear that mobilized him. You know, you normally teach and say that fear is the opposite of faith. You've not studied your Bible. You've not studied your Bible. The motivation, the manifestation of Noah's faith was fear. Oh, you want me to show you? I know you don't believe it. It sounds. You know, the your 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 philosophy is not what I believe in the Bible. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. They don't believe me. Okay. Um, let's digress. Let's digress. Um Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7. Give me 7. Hebrews 11 7. Quickly. We'll come back to Job. He said, by faith Noah being warned of God of things not yet, not seen as yet, moved with fear. 
is he was mobilized. The proof of his faith, the evidence of his faith was here. What you can say is that this is not the fear that has torment. This is the fear that has reverence. But nonetheless, it was fear. That fear was what mobilized him to walk for 120 years without resting. He was a captive of that fear. People that have seen the visions of God, you will know them. They are captives of the things that they have seen. I told you that I was taken to heaven. That I died at the age of 13 and was taken to heaven for 8 hours. And the Lord has not given me permission. I am not of this world, man. I am not of this world. That's when I came back, that's when I knew our pulpits were, were lying instruments. And I said, I will not live on this path, this vague path of darkness. I will not live on it. Even if that's what ministry calls it. I've seen the glory of God. It was where I went that I saw that if I commit immorality, my life will end. So my motivation for staying pure is not, it's not because of purity. It's a, it's a strategy, it's a survival. <laughs> you will see a man will live a life of frivolity if he has not seen anything. So once and again, God will bring his lens and use his lens to cover your eyes so that you can see through it. It brings you into captivity. You will know that your entire generation can be wrong. You imagine someone, Noah, building an ark for 120 years and people were mocking him because rain had not fallen since the world was created. God used an irrigation system to water the, the earth. It, the Bible says a mist came out of the ground and watered the whole. So the rain he was talking about was something they believed was in the figment of his imagination. But he was a preacher of righteousness. The ark he built, the dimensions of it, he downloaded it from heaven. He never went to architectural school. He built from the palaces of heaven because his eyes were trained to see through the telescope of God. You will live a mundane life, a normal life. You will chase after shadows. You will believe in vanity if God does not embarrass you quickly by smuggling a vision into your space. People do ministry and they look for the world to help them. I see the abomination of our time. It's because the visions of God are no longer available. But the Lord will do a miracle in your life in the next 15 minutes. The day the Lord gives me permission to speak about the things I've seen. Ah, I fear no man. No. Your face will not put me to flight. I've seen terrible things. If you have seen as many things I've seen as I've seen, that's why I'm not afraid of death. I know where I'm going. I've, oh my Jesus, oh my Jesus. I've been privileged to walk in heaven. I've been privileged. I've been privileged. So you can't threaten me with death. Death is just transition. It's just transition. And if I die because of the gospel, they, I've seen the glory. Yes. In heaven, let me tell you beforehand, in heaven, the place Jesus gave me, only few men that walk this world got there. I'm telling you from now. Because when we meet there, I will remind you. <laughs> <laughs> I serve Jesus. I have seen the vanity of, of, of money, of, of material stuff. Oh my God. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Singing Messiah. <laughs> Messiah. 
He's the King of Kings. Messiah, Messiah, He's the Lord of Lords. Messiah, Messiah, He's the King of Kings. Oh, Messiah. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Singing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Singing Hallelujah. Il a monsieur Ruka bossa laetani.
chapter 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come of come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He accepted the identity of being Pharaoh's daughter for long, but when he came of years, he refused. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Why? Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured. As seeing him who is invisible. Oh my God. Mm. He endured because he saw an invincible one. Ooh, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Ooh, yeah. Somebody sing hallelujah. Ah, 